This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Well, joining us today is Darren Hazelwood, the CEO of Panther Metals, to discuss the technical update that the company released on their Dotted Lake project. Well, thank you very much for your time, Darren. How are you? I'm very well, Mark. Thanks for having us on. It's been a little while. Yeah, it's been a little while, but it's good to see some activity with Panther here. So let's just go through. You've completed advanced geophysical 3D inversion modeling and grid analysis to support drill targeting. So it sounds like maybe you'll be getting active on the ground but before we talk about what that might mean can you just remind us of the sort of the status quo of dotted lake and really why you've commissioned this work and what sort of led into it yeah look the project has developed and our confidence in the project has grown massively over the last three or four years it has to be said it that isn't just on the back of the work that we've done um i'm sort of on record as saying that the work that gt resources have done over their tyco belt which is led to Glencore taking a stake that I believe now is around 16.2%, um, has been remarkably successful. Um, they, they, they've they declared a new nickel zone over a new nickel region, really, over 20 kilometres. They've hit, I believe, six targets. They've had really high nickel grades, um, some great success, and success has been recognised by the majors. And if you look at the structures on the GT resources ground, it comes around and it starts feeding down sort of south, southwest. And that goes right across the North Shore of Dotted Lake. The way the GT resources had success, they had anomalous soils. So they had high grade copper, nickel, uh, cobalt. And then they effectively just drilled those targets. And this is where the discoveries come from. And, um, that actually has it, it huge parallels across the dotted lake. We've got four, five, six different target areas with highly anomalous copper, cobalt, and nickel. Um, in almost all instances, we either exceed, but we certainly match everything. And the, the, the quantum in terms of the, of the amount in on the North Shore dotted lake. Now that far exceeds anything, um, um, GT resources have had over that 20 kilometers of Tycho belt. So that's what's led us to this stage of getting our MAG data reviewed by, um, by, by Abitibi Geophysics. Okay. And I mean, are you looking then to almost replicate what GT resources have done? Because of course you said there, they've got their soil samples, done their aero MAG as well, and effectively drilling that area. And you've got your soil samples, you've now got your, uh, your, 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 your geophysical data. You're looking to sort of, repeat what they did effectively drill where the soil samples are and where the mag is showing a high uh, anomaly oh absolutely okay um that, that that's entirely our, our next stages um the, the, these these ultra ultramafic intrusive complexes that, that, that are on dotted lake we believe they're driven by um the dotted lake baffling and it's the most sensible route to go uh we now everybody just looks at this and, and we are now certain um that this contains mineralization um the only way to find out the quantum is to stick through holes in the ground and this yeah. isn't just us saying this this is independent reports now stating those facts as well okay and you're looking at commodities across you know, nickel cobalt copper gold and, and pges effectively you don't really know what you might find. You're not targeting one specific commodity. Well, we know that the system contains gold. Yeah. Um, the Actually, probably the most interesting one of the lot would be the cobalt. And the reason being is cobalt doesn't tend to travel. So if you find cobalt in an area, that source invariably is nearby. And the fact that it marries in with nickel and copper, and it's nickel, copper, ni nickel, copper, and cobalt that GC resources have had their success on just adds to the um to the sort of the, the geological um picture 
Yeah, sure. So, so it's not necessarily that you want to get cobalt out to take it to market. It's that if you find cobalt, it's travelled less. So that would suggest that the the core of the rest of the deposits are not far away. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And we've obviously within the announcement, you know, we, we we've got we've got parallel conductors that that that, that have been defined within this, and um, and and we're we're in an area mark here that's that's got mines. Mm. You know, not not too far north, fifteen kilometers. You've got the Gecko Mine. Uh, south, you've got the well, the world famous Hemlo Mine, mm. and this Greenstone Belt, the Hemlo Schreiber Greenstone Belt. You, you, it's 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 world renowned. Um, you, you've got the Winston Mine to the west. Um, you've got the Marathon Mine that they're just trying to get um, funding on. In fact, the Marathon Mine's worth mentioning because that was discovered as part after the. Um, survey conducted by the Ontario Geological Society in the late nineties. And the two highest copper grades in lake sediments, both of those are on the map, what is going to become the marathon mine. The third highest, um, copper sample within that, um, survey was actually on south of just on the edge of uh, Lansom Lake, which is one of the targets that we're going to drill on dotted lake. And, um, yeah, that, that gives you some indication of why this project's generated a lot of interest. Now we've been quiet for a little while and we haven't been quiet for, for, for no reason. Um, there, there's a huge amount going on both corporately and, and on the ground. And to get this data through now to confirm our own thoughts is, is, um, the, the, the timing is perfect. Let's just say that. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, you mentioned one target there that sounds quite promising, but of course, 21 drill targets have been identified. And I think the RNS talked about the focus is now on drill pad locations and putting the required logistics in place. So the ultimate question is when drill? When will the drills be on the ground? When will you be looking to get them turning? I think it's safe to say that um, we, 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 we need to, we want to get that information out to the market. Um, we haven't been quiet on that behind the scenes. And, um, I think that I'm comfortable in, in, in saying that we expect to have a lot of answers on Dotted Lake by, by Christmas of this year. By Christmas. Okay. Good. Well, answers suggest that the drills will have turned and some results will uh, be coming back. So that's good. I can only let you, um, put the two and two together there, Mark. Sure. Well, thank you very much for your time as always. Darren Hazel with the CEO of Panther Metals. Looking forward to uh, catching up on the next bit of news from Panther Metals. Thanks, Mark. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programmes at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.